Hi, this is Erika Kasab from Small Robot Studio. In this video, I'm going to teach you a digital painting tool known as masking. Learning how to use it allows you to focus on painting instead of fighting the software. It makes your process more efficient, saving lots of time and worry from painting outside of a line or an area. I will show you how it works in Procreate, Clip Studio and Photoshop. If you're familiar with traditional painting, you probably know that in techniques such as watercolor, it is common to use masking tape to preserve the edges of the frame and paint freely. It doesn't matter if your paint overflows. At the end, you remove the tape and the edges are clean. Digital painting softwares have tools that will give us the same power to define an area to paint with no fear of overflowing or losing the edges that we originally defined. The simplest version of this tool is the alpha lock. Your canvas is a grid. Each section is a pixel. These pixels can be transparent or have color information. If you are new to digital painting, you should know that this checkerboard is often used to represent transparent pixels. The alpha lock will block any transparent pixel, allowing you to paint only in the area you originally define. This is great for still life studies or simple paintings that require very few layers. Before shading or anything, define a good and interesting silhouette. Activate the alpha lock and voila! At any point you can deactivate the alpha lock to make changes to that silhouette if you wish. For Photoshop and Clip Studio, you will find a tool in the layer panel lock area. The icon is different but both have this checkerboard I mentioned before. Select your layer, click on the icon and a lock will pop up in your layer, showing you it's now working. So, go ahead and paint freely. By the way, this is a very standard tool, so even if you're not using Photoshop, Clip Studio or Procreate, the tool will have a very similar name and location. Alpha locks are great and simple, but as we move into more complex artwork, I will also need more complex tools. But before I get carried away with the lesson, let me take a moment to thank our dear Patreon supporters. Thanks to your support, we are able to create more illustration and CG tutorials every week. In return, we offer rewards like bonus videos, assets to download or complete unedited time lapses. Sign up at patreon.com slash smallrobotstudio. Let's talk about clipping masks. A clipping mask will let me define a silhouette and link more than one layer into that original shape. I have the sketch of this character. I painted the full silhouette in one color. These layers are a mess of overflowing paint. The layer with the silhouette will define the visible area and we must place it at the bottom of all the other layers. I activate the clipping mask on a layer on top and now I can paint only in the silhouette defined. Look at the arrow pointing at the main layer. I actually mix the alpha lock and the clipping masks a lot. The complete silhouette is not the only shape. There's interior shapes, like the eyes or the skin, that I'm gonna define and then lock it to paint only inside it. In Photoshop and Clip Studio the process will be the same. Put the ruling layer at the bottom, right click on the layers on top and select clipping mask. These softwares are more sophisticated, so a clipping mask will work with individual layers or folders. If your artwork is more complex and you need even more control, we got yet another more complex tool. Masks. A mask is a layer within a layer. They work in black and white. Black will hide, turning everything transparent, and white will reveal. If I lower the opacity of the paint applied, or use grays, it will make those pixels translucent. The closer they are to black, the more they will seem to disappear. And the other way around. To create a mask in Procreate, click the Layers panel. Tap on the desired layers to get the options and then on Mask. You can see a new layer linked to the original one. Here's where you can paint black and white. Now I can clean this mess with my mask and define a lovely silhouette. Once again, we can combine the previous tools, alpha locks, clipping masks and masks. I can have a main layer with a mask and link even more through a clipping mask. It's easy to go back and modify the mask without making the change over and over on every layer. 
If I need to make changes, I just need to modify the mask and this will affect everyone. If I wasn't using it, I would have to make the change individually on each layer. I must admit that Procreate is not my favorite for masking. Photoshop and Clip Studio once again offer a more sophisticated use of the same tool. To create a mask in Photoshop and Clip Studio, again go to the layer panel. Look for this icon and click on it. It will create a white mask layer, in which you can paint black to start hiding things. A note for Clip Studio, instead of using black, you should use a transparent swatch. Make sure that you are selecting the mask instead of the regular layer, otherwise you will be modifying your painting. If you want to start with a full black mask, hold Alt or Option for Mac while clicking the layer mask button. My painting disappeared because my mask is completely black, as you can see on the thumbnail. Everything became a transparent pixel, but as soon as I start painting with white, I will reveal my layer. This tool is key in my workflow. I paint a silhouette in a normal layer, then I make a selection by holding Ctrl or Command on a Mac and click on the layer. This will select all the pixels that I painted. Now with this selection I will click on the mask button and it will make a mask based on the selection. The selected area is white and the rest is black. I'm going to create a folder and drag the mask into the folder. Anything inside my folder will be affected by my mask. Every layer that I use to paint is gonna be inside that folder. I usually keep the original layer lock and safe in the bottom. If we use masking to make, let's say, a comic panel, but we didn't quite like the location, we can adjust it. Use the move tool. By default, when you move the mask, it will move your normal layer as well. In the layer panel, you will notice that between your layer and the mask, there is a check or a chain. This means that the mask and the layers are linked. If I click on it, it will deactivate it and now I can move them independently. To erase a mask, select it and click the trash bin. The software is going to ask you if you want to delete it or apply it. By deleting it, the mask will be gone and your layer will be back to its original state. If you apply it instead, you will be erasing the pixels that were hidden in black. Be careful not to erase information you might need later. There is plenty more that you can do with masks, but I don't want to get caught with more technicalities and the small differences between softwares. Just right-click on the top of your mask or explore any mask-related menu. You will get an idea of what is possible. My objective is to show you enough, so you only spend a bit of time setting up your file and more time painting. Here's one last example of all the tools working together. Being able to paint without worrying about overflowing paint is already awesome, but the best thing about this tool is the control and power of changing things. My client wants to change the colors? No problem. Easy done. Should I remove the feathers? That's fine. I will hide that layer and modify the mask. Without a mask, a change would be painful and an awkward process. This is why I love them. They make the painting process more enjoyable and any future adjustment an easy task. That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.